Yeah, good evening, everyone, once more. And um, this night, we are going to continue from where we stopped. Last night, we treated the last topic we treated is a business analyst skills. So tonight we are going to start from the core components of business analysis. These are the core components that weave together to form business analysis. And if any of these uh, components is missing, then we will we'll find it difficult to have a full structure of what we call business analysis. In business analysis, we have change. That's why we say that business analysts are change agents. Number one is change. Then we have um, need and we have solution then we have stakeholders we have value we have a context change is the act of transformation in response to a need Change works to improve the performance. Please mute yourself. Change works to improve the performance of an enterprise. We try to bring about change when there is this, a, a problem or when we are looking at a better way of doing things even if you don't have a problem and we are looking at a better way of doing things then we desire for change and most of the time this is what we are driving in an organization as business analyst then we have need need is what we called requirements a problem or opportunity to be addressed is a need need can cause change by motivating stakeholders to act. When there is a problem, stakeholders, the problem triggers stakeholders to act, to solve that problem. If there is an opportunity we are looking at that can uh, equally trigger change. If we are trying to improve on the way we are doing things to maximize opportunities, then that triggers change as well. So this is what uh, we call requirements. Then we have solutions. Solution is a specific way of satisfying one or more needs, which is a requirement in a particular context. A solution satisfies a need by resolving 
a problem faced by stakeholders. Some of these softwares we are developing here and there as business analysts. There are solutions. We are trying to use this solution to solve one problem and then bring about a change. See, that is where they are, they, 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 they are linked together. You see their relationship. And who uh, handle, who, who, who projects or who drives for these activities? Who drives for, for, for a change? in order to solve a need, these are the stakeholders. A group or individual with a relationship to the change, the need or the solution, that is what we call stakeholder. Somebody who is at the center of all these, these are the stakeholders. And when we get that solution, we use solution to come up, to, to, to bring about a change. And this change brings value. Value is the what, importance or usefulness of something to a stakeholder within a context. Context is the circumstance that influence are influenced by and provides understanding of the change. Change, changes are caused within a context. So this is just me trying to link all these components together for you to see the way business analysis work. As you see this um, network, this is the way they are linked together. And within this network, if you pull one part of this network, you see that we are not going to have a complete business analysis experience. So that is how business analysis work. But all these, we are going to be looking more at the need, which is the requirement. It's very, very important to understand the need. Because if you don't understand the need, then we are going to find it difficult as a business analyst within this context. The, the focal point here is to understand the need this need is what does these stakeholders want? What is their need? You have to understand the need for you to look for for you uh, to look for a solution. You can't look for a solution of something you don't understand. For instance, if a a business analyst, um, sorry, if a stakeholder goes to the hospital to meet a medical doctor, which is a human business analyst. Then the doctor will try to find out the need. After listening to you, the doctor, that is, when the doctor is asking you questions to understand the kind of sickness you're having, 
That's when the doctor is doing requirement gathering. And when the doctor finish collecting this requirement gathering, the doctor will go into what we call requirement analysis by going to the lab to test, conduct a series of tests to find out what is wrong. And based on the doctor's analysis, the doctor will come out with a solution, which is medication, drugs. And when the doctor administers that medication, which is the drug, you take those drugs, you feel better. And the doctor brings about a change in your system. And when the doctor brings about a change in your system, you become healthy. And this has added value to your system, good health. And all these things happen within the context of your body being not well. So that is just the simplest analogy for you to understand this. So what the doctor will be looking at, the doctor here is you, the business analyst, is to understand what is wrong with you. Because you can be telling a doctor, um, you have a headache, but doctor will understand because a, a lot of things can create a headache. One doctor wants to understand the actual, what is causing this headache. You can be stressed, stress can cause headache. And um, malaria can equally cause headache. Typhoid fever can cause headache. So the doctor needs to understand. So that's why we are focusing so much on the need, which is the requirement, understand the need. So that we are not going to be using medication for typhoid fever to be administering for malaria. Do you have any question within this? Uh, uh, understanding the way this component is weaved together. Okay, we move. Then this now brings us to this need requirement. What is requirement, which is need? And what are the requirement classification? How does this need classify? Requirement elicitation. Please mute yourself. Requirement elicitation. How do you gather data or data collection? Requirement analysis. How do I analyze our requirements? And requirement design. How do we design our requirement? So let's start with requirements. A requirement is a usable representation of need. Requirement focus on understanding what kind of value could be delivered if requirement is fulfilled. So this need, if the, the if we if we need to deliver a value, what do we need to do in order to deliver a value? What solution are we looking at in order to deliver a value? If it's that a company um, is having a the sales is going down and the profitability is going down as well, then that is a problem. So how, what, what can we do to address this particular need? What are the requirements we need to address? This how I want us to understand this requirement. Then we have various ways we classify this requirement in business analysis. We have business requirements, we have stakeholder requirements, we have solution requirements. 
And on that solution requirement, you have functional and non-functional requirements. Business requirement. These are statement of goals, objectives, and outcome that describes why a change has been initiated. They can apply to the whole of an enterprise, a business area or specific initiative. So when we are looking at business requirement, can be the whole organizational objective, their goal, or looking at their vision as a big organization, the, the requirement can, can affect the whole organization. Or it can be within a department, or it can be within a, 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 a a business area of a department. So that is a, <clears throat> what we call business requirements. Business requirements, an example is that the sales is going down. It's a big issue in an organization. All of a sudden, their cells started going down. They need to find out what, what, why their cells are going down. So it's a big requirement. And this kind of requirement um, can cause sleep, sleepless nights to stakeholders. Then we'll have stakeholder requirements. <clears throat> this describes the need of stakeholders that must be met in order to achieve business requirements. They must serve as a bridge between business and solution requirements. So when there is a situation in an organization, anything doesn't apply. Because they have a problem doesn't mean that you, you need to do apply any kind of solution to solve that problem. Stakeholders have a way. They want it to be solved. They, they know that their sales is going down, but there is a way they are looking at getting that particular requirement, uh, that, that particular problem solved. So you need to, that's why you need that the company have a problem. Yes, they might, might come, you know their problem, but you need to understand from the, 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 the stakeholders what they want, how do they want it. Even if what they want is not the best, you still need to understand what they want. Then if you're advising them against what they want based on your expert uh, judgment, then that will be that, okay, you are trying to sell your own idea to them because you feel you are an expert in the field. If a patient goes to the uh, hospital and you, the medical doctor, as long as the patient is conscious, you, the doctor, you don't just start injecting, that the body is hot, you start just injecting, no. As long as the, 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 the temperature is high, you, you just start, you need to ask questions. You don't just start administering drugs because you feel they have high temperature. As long as they are still conscious, they are within their, 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 their consciousness, they, they, they know themselves, they can talk. The first thing you do is to ask questions. What happened? So from there, you understand them. And then you tell them that this is the way from what this is the way I want to treat you. Some people can say, no, I don't want it that way. And 
being a medical doctor, you can't force yourself onto a patient. So that is it. Even if the, you know that the patient that you need to um, having a, a tummy problem, a, a, a patient is having a stomach doesn't mean that you just start um, is an appendicitis. No, you still need to ask questions to find out. So you as a business analyst, you need to ask questions. That is when you are trying to understand the requirements from the stakeholder. So that's why stakeholder requirements comes handy. You can't do anything without stakeholders. For instance, in my, my current job, now I've, 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 I've come to understand what they are trying to do in one of the projects I'm managing, which is a um, uh, business to business integration. The company just acquired a, a new company and they want to integrate the two companies together. But I know that this is what they want to do. What I still need to ask my stakeholders some questions to understand some of the things that is going on and how they want it. And then from there, I'll then come in as an expert, bringing my own expert judgment. And when you find out the requirement from the stakeholder, that's when the solution requirement comes in. Solution requirement describes the capabilities and qualities of solution that meets the stakeholder requirements. They provide the appropriate level of detail to allow the development and implementation of solution. Solution requirement can be divided into two subcategories, which is functional and uh, non-functional requirements. So by the time you have had a chat with the stakeholders, you collect the requirements. That's when you do requirement elicitation. But when you gather those requirements, you analyze the requirements. And after analyzing the requirements, then you do solution evaluation, which is when you understand the solution requirement to find a look at various solution in the market that suit them based on their need, their, their resources at hand. And looking at this solution requirement, we have functional requirement. Functional requirements describe the capabilities that a solution must have in terms of behavior and information that the solution will manage. For instance, some of the functional requirements of an online shopping store is the front end where you can see products listed on the front end. And the ability to interact with those pro products, whereby you can search the pro product, you can navigate, you can put the, pro uh, the, pro the product on the shopping cart. And from the shopping cart, you can equally um, buy the product. All these things are functional requirements of an uh, e-commerce solution. But there is non-functional requirements. These are some requirements that are very, very important, but you don't see them. You cannot interact them. Some of them are the security of the uh, system that uh, some of the security of the online store, are they, um, do they have enough security to protect the buyers from their credit card being hacked? Are they scalable? Are they the speed of some of these um, web applications? Some of them you cannot see all these things, but they are requirements as well. 
So that's why they, they are there, but they are not functional. You cannot um, see them, you can't feel them, but they are there. So we call them non-functional requirements. Some of them like uh, scalability, do they have the capacity to expand if the business is growing? These are the things we need to look at when we are trying to develop a requirement. So now we've seen various requirements we have. So now, how do we, because we've seen that it's very important to understand stakeholders and then to gather requirements from them before we start anything in trying to solve a problem. You can't solve any problem without talking to stakeholders. Then how do we talk to these stakeholders and then gather this requirement from them? This is going to take us to what we call requirements, elicitation, or data gathering. Requirement elicitation is a process of gathering data or gathering these requirements from the stakeholders. Can call it requirement elicitation, can call it uh, a data gathering. Any of them, we call it, they are the same thing. So, in order to do that, these are various stages we need to pass through in order to, to gather um, requirements. Then we need to um, plan for our requirement uh, gathering. And after planning for requirement gathering, then we need to decide which um, we need to decide which of the uh, approach we need to use to gather requirements. We have so many approaches, but we are going to be focusing on one, which is uh, mainly what we use. And that's what we call an interview. We can use a um, survey, we can use a questionnaire, but the major one that we use, which uh, I've been using as a business analyst, and they've been demanding for it is, is more uh, is more popular and is more acceptable. And that is a uh, interview. Even if it's through workshop or one-on-one -on -one, is interview. So this is um, bringing us to an approach on trying to run effective uh, interview in order to gather the requirements we need. In order to start gathering our requirements, the first thing we need to do is uh, to plan for our requirements. We start by clearly defining the purpose of the requirements to the stakeholders. And then we need to identify the stakeholders that need to uh, be engaged. If you're having a workshop, 
where we want to engage more than one stakeholder at a time, then we need to attend, uh, identify the stakeholders that are going to attend that uh, workshop. But if we need to engage them one on one, we need to still identify the stakeholders that we are going to engage. After identifying them, the next thing is to prepare a list of questions prior to the interview. And we decide the type of interview we will use. Then we decide the data capturing method. Data capturing method during the interview, we decide how we're going to. Is it um, at times uh, during the interview, we can um, uh, give them form to, to, to fill? Or uh, you can be, uh, they, they can be talking and you'll be taking notes, or you can be when they are talking because these days conducting interview online or via uh, video conferencing is now very, very popular. So if you are going to be recording the interview, you have to decide which one and make sure you, you know how to uh, record video or you, if you are taking notes, then you have to prepare yourself to take notes or you come with somebody who will be helping you to take notes. Then after that, contact the respondent before the interview. You need to contact them before the interview to let them know about the interview and uh, agree on a date. If the date is agreed, then you can share the, the venue for the interview. If the, the, the is, if it's an online uh, interview via video conferencing, then you need to prefer and share the link for the interview. If it's Zoom or whichever one you want to use, there are so many applications we can use. Have Zoom, go to meeting, um, Google Meet and the rest of them. So when that is sorted, then you know you have a date, you have an event coming up. So the, the next thing is to do a pilot interview to refine the question you've generated. Then when the day comes for the interview, you try to come on time and then you conduct the interview on that uh, time and date. It's very, it's not good as a business analyst that you are the business analyst. You put an interview or a workshop and uh, you miss that workshop. Uh, people will come for the workshop and they don't see you. You are, you are, that's how you start losing your reputation. Such stakeholder might not take you serious again, might never even accept to have interview with you again. So, but if there is a situation, emergency, that you couldn't make it, then you, you, you call the whoever is um, attending the interview or the stakeholder to cancel the interview and apologize for, for that. And take notes or record the interview in order to capture the conversation. Be a good listener. Don't interrupt. Make the participant feel comfortable and respectful of boundaries. In as much as you try to, to, to make the participant feel comfortable, at times you can um, use icebreaker or you can uh, crack joke, but no boundaries. There are some certain things you don't venture into. You don't, because you want to um, use an icebreaker, you start venturing into somebody's private life that will make the respondent to be uncomfortable. You don't start asking somebody 
about their relationship because they want to break a nice, they want to uh, do a nice break. I start asking somebody, what if they are they're having issues with their relationship? So you don't do that. The person might all of a sudden become sober or so. These are some of the boundaries you must respect. Before completing the interview, ask the respondent for additional input or comments because you might have um, captured the questions, but the questions you captured might not be enough. Maybe the respondent have um, something they know that you, you, you didn't capture and is very key. This is the time with some of them that really want you to succeed in your project, they will start telling you things you need to know. Because they, most of them, the process you are trying to improve or the problem you are trying to solve, they have been in that problem. They know it more than you. So this is time when they, 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 they uh, make inputs, they use their initiative to make input. That's when they, they, they flow. They tell you a lot of things you didn't ask. So after that, then take time to document important ideas and findings soon after completing the interview. It's very dangerous to postpone this particular activity. It's advised that as the, the interview is uh, coming up to an end, you start doing your documentation immediately because you might start missing out some basic information or you might even misplace some of the important items so it's better you finish up the the, the interview or the workshop by doing the documentation and after that you send the um the finding or your documentation to the stakeholder for validation. This is the time that the stakeholder will look at what you gathered or make sure that the what you gathered or the, 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 the requirement you generated is actually the input him or 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 she made within the interview. So if there is any error or mistake, this is the time to correct such mistakes before you proceed to um, that analysis to analyze the, the requirement that you've gathered. So that is how you do a very comprehensive requirement gathering. This is very important because as a business analyst, more especially if you are if you are starting a business analyst or if you are a junior business analyst, during the interview, they will always want to know how you conduct interview. As a senior business analyst, they might not ask you because this might become so junior for you because this is something a business analyst does every time. So if you are trying to, for instance, I'm going for an interview now, and the 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 the, the hiring manager is now trying to ask me how do I conduct my interview. I will answer it, but that shouldn't be that's a waste of time because based on the rule you apply, you should know that I must be doing this for a long time. But if you are starting, it's good you understand this sequ sequence of activities. So when this is done, the next thing you do is uh, you move to um, 
requirement analysis. Doing requirement analysis, these are some of the things you do observe. You specify and model the requirements. You verify the requirements. You validate the requirements. You define the solution options and analyze potential values and uh, make recommendations. Specify and model requirement means uh, you describe a set of requirements or design in details using analytical techniques. This is the time you start applying all these uh, techniques using tools like visual, um, lucid charts, um, draw.io, to apply these techniques such as a process mapping, um, requirement uh, gap analysis, um, uh, cause and effects, root cause analysis. This is the time you start uh, applying all these things using some of these tools, mapping the processes. So all these things, we are going to look into them. We are going to do them practical, but not here. Is when we move down to the techniques, then we'll start doing all these things. We're going to look at them in practical where you are going to be actually doing them. So that's what we do by specify a model requirement. That's called requirement modeling. So when you list specify the 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 the, the, the main requirement, for instance, when you gather requirements, you document the requirement. When you are documenting those requirements, you are specifying them. Like if it's the current process, you are trying to make a uh, improvement on a process, you need to identify the process that you are trying to improve. And when you are trying to identify that process, you are trying to improve. That is when you specify the, maybe the current process, we call them as this process, as it is. And then later you specify the future process. We call them to be. So when you specify all those processes, it doesn't end that you leave them down. You need this uh, modeling uh, language in order to model them in a graphical or, or in a diagram so that it will look um, very good and the, 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 the stakeholders can easily understand them. So it's a must. This diagram is a must. This modeling is a must in business analysis. So because you find out as a business analyst, you might spend a lot of your time doing a lot of modeling. Actually, they are fun. So they are fun because it's, uh, it's kind of drawing and that's it. It's not like it's, there is no code in it. It's just drawing. So when you do, after doing the modeling, then you need to verify the requirements. Ensure that a set of requirements or design has been developed in enough detail to be used by particular stakeholders or internal, internally consistent and uh, of high quality. So when you <coughs> the way we do the verification, because when you, you map out the high level requirement, we describe, describe a require high level is when the requirement is at a, a chunk state, when it's in a big state, it's not, it doesn't have enough details. You need to verify the requirement, you need to break them down 
we have high level and low level, we need to bring them down to low level to make sure that it meets the stakeholders one. It, it have enough capacity, it has enough quality to satisfy the stakeholders need. And after them, you do requirement validation. Validation is we need to engage the stakeholders for them to look at the requirement and be happy that actually this is meeting their need. So the requirement needs to be validated before you can move uh, to the next level, making sure that validation is yes, you've actually captured our need. This is actually what we are looking for. When the, the, you've done the requirement validation, the next thing is to move in and do your solution um, evaluation. You look at various solutions, identify various solutions, explore and describe different ways of meeting stakeholders' need. If you are if you are trying to implement an uh, e-commerce web application for your clients, there are so many solutions for that in the market. So you need to understand the the stakeholders' budget. That is part of the requirement analysis you've conducted. You need to understand how much they have. And you need to look at the, the, the solution within their, their budget that best satisfy their need. It is during solution evaluation that you match all these things together. We have, um, if you are looking for e-commerce solution, we have WooCommerce, mainly used by WordPress. We have a Shopify e-commerce. We have um, best pork e-commerce, which is a custom made e-commerce. This time you customize what you need. You, you tailor it to your need. You can hire developers to help you do that. Then we have SAP Cloud Commerce. We have Salesforce Commerce. There are, there are so many of them, but they come with different for, um, functionalities, different features, and they solve different needs. So you need, and they, they are of different prices. So you need to know the one that your customer can afford. And you need to know the time frame. It's part of the requirements the time frame within which your, 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 um, your stakeholder needs that solution. You might have a very beautiful solution, but looking at the time frame, it doesn't meet the requirement. If your stakeholder is an is emergent of um, e-commerce web application within three months, and you've, you've identified a solution that will take six months to be implemented. They are out of scope. So when this is done, you analyze this. Is the time you, you make recommendation. You analyze the potential value that solution is going to bring, then you make recommendation and that's when you come up with a business case to summarize all the work you've been doing within that requirement. We assess the business value associated with the potential solution and compare different options, include trade-offs to identify and recommend the solution option that delivers the greatest overall value. This time you have to do a cost-benefit analysis. 
in order to show that the cost of that solution outweighs um, the, the benefits of that solution outweighs the cost. All these things are the things you need to put together within your business case, within this uh, particular stage. So that is um, requirement analysis for you. Then solution evaluation. Analyzing solution is not easy. Well, there are so many of them in the market. So you must know, you must have key performance indicators that will help you to match what you are looking for. The solution that matches your indicate, indicator. To do solution evaluation, you need to measure solution performance. You need to analyze performance measure. You need to assess the limitation. You need to um, analyze solution limitation and the enterprise limitation. And then uh, you make recommendation that increases the highest value. To measure solution performance, you have to determine the most appropriate way to assess the performance of a solution, including how it aligns with enterprise goal and objective and perform the assessment. So most of the time, I use uh, some of these um, consultant or consulting um, applications like Gartner Report. It helps a lot when you are trying to do solution evaluation because they have they are they are they are they are, they are, they are their solution or their website or their report do have the best analytical report based on every solution in any way you want to analyze it. So if you are trying to, to do it yourself, it's going to be very difficult for you to do. So it's better you, you, you use Gartner report to, to do that. We are going to come to Gartner report because every most of the solution you are going to use, they are there. They've analyzed, helped you to analyze it. So analyze performance. Gartner report will analyze performance for you and measure everything. Examine information regarding the performance of the solution in order to understand values it delivers to the enterprise and to stakeholders and to determine whether it's meeting current business need. Assess solution limitation. Investigate issues within the scope of the solution that may prevent it from meeting the current business need. Assess enterprise limitation, investigate issues within, when you are talking about enterprise limitation, you are talking about uh, issue that is outside of the solution that may prevent it from realizing the full value that the solution is capable of providing. This is outside of the solution. And when you are talking about solution limitation, you are talking 
about limitations within the solution. When you've done that, the next thing is to recommend action to increase solution value. Identify and define action the enterprise can take to increase the value that can be delivered. During your recommendation, you need to clearly identify what that solution can do and how they can increase value. You need to state how they are going to increase the value. Or if you don't do that, the stakeholder will not buy your idea. They need to show. You need to, to, to in, in black and white, and state how this particular solution you are recommending, how is it going to solve this problem? Then when that is done, We've uh, actually make recommendation and the stakeholders have uh, gone through our business case and then validated our business case. That means approve our business case. When that is done, the next thing is to move in and uh, start designing our requirements. Call it a requirement design. Or solution design. Once the customer wants and need have been identified, the design team convert them to engineering requirement for the product. So the stakeholders will then convert the business requirement into technical requirements. Just like I told you people when we are starting that we have <coughs> business business analysts and we have technical business analysts. So when we start talking about uh, business requirements, all these requirements we'll be talking about all this while, who is doing that? Business business analysts. The business business analyst, the person I'm doing all this uh, requirement gathering, requirement uh, analysis, requirement uh, this and that. But now, when the solution is now being identified and, and approved, then it's now the duty of the technical business analyst to start converting those business requirements into technical use because developers that are going to develop that solution, they don't understand business requirements. What the business requirements is not their language. You need to convert it to developer's language, what they will understand. And to do that, what you need to do is um, to start uh, translating those business requirements into technical requirements, such as um, user stories, acceptance criteria, use cases, wireframes, mockups. At this point, the B is convert the business requirement to technical requirement, which our user stories and acceptance criteria. User stories are requirements for any functionalities or feature which is written down in one or two lines or maximum of five lines. User story is a feature like any application or solution we are using. All these features you use all the time to upload your video, to play your video with YouTube or in Facebook. All these things are features 
of that application. And what we call them is user stories. Within the development environment, we call them user stories. But when it comes out to the produ um, production environment where people are now using it, it's now called features, where you can use it, but what we call it is user stories. User stories in that we tend to understand the way the users use it. What are they using it to achieve? Trying to understand what the user uses for is that story we are trying to, to understand. So that's why you call it user stories. So a piece of requirement or functionality is called the user story. So you can see how the language is now beginning to change from the language we used before. Requirement, requirements. As we start stepping into technical area, you might not be hearing so much about requirements. You start hearing so much about user stories, backlogs, epics, features. But now the requirement will start to, to, to appear. So when you start seeing user stories, is still the same thing requirements. But the language is now changing because we are in the technical environment. Acceptance criteria is a set of acceptance condition or business rule, which the functionalities or the features or the user stories must meet in order to be accepted by the product owner or stakeholder. So that is it. So looking at this diagram here, the sequence of activities is why undertake this project, which is the business objective. Then here, we we'll look at uh, what the user will be able to do with the product. That's use cases, scenarios, and their stories. What the developer build, features, functional requirement and product characteristics. system component and how they fit in together. That is the product architecture and the user architecture. You look at how does all these things fit in together. Behavior of individual components, detailed models or class design, database design, user interface design, then implementation of each a logarithm, user interface or control. So that's the time we start implementing all these user stories. Uh, these user stories, when we are, we, are, we are building, more especially in agile environment, you build them one by one and start fixing them. Just like you see a car, they build tire, they will build um, uh, other things you they are they don't you you don't build everything together you build its user stories piece by piece features by features and you keep adding them one after the other when you finish building you add when you finish building you add and as you are adding you will not stop the production environment because is people have started using it and you have to add them more so that's how we develop all these uh, softwares so that's how you you do your solution design so very soon we'll jump into it and start doing all these things uh, in practicals you see how it works 
So um, this will bring us to the end of to this uh, class. So if you have any any question at this moment, you can bring it up. You can bring your questions up at this moment if you have any. Uh, I wish you people good night. Okay. Thank you everyone for attending. I will see you here this time tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir. Thank you. Yeah. For the for the lectures. Yeah, thank you.